friends, I'm Dee Dee West. And I'm Summer. And this is Broken Limelight. So we're going to be talking about Army Hammer in this episode, and uh, I, I completely understand that a lot of people have no idea who that is. This is actually really fucking recent, so let me give you just a little overview. So Army Hammer came from a long line of rich and powerful men. He's also an actor. He kind of did, like, a lot of smaller roles. Um, I think the role he was probably most well-known for was in the movie The Social Network. He played the twins. Did you see that movie? No. I didn't either. (laughs) But anyway, so that was kind of like his breakthrough role. This guy is about our age, actually. He was born in 1986, so I believe he is um, 35 right now. 36. Math. (laughs) (laughs) I know. I'm like, I don't know what year he was born. Um, You just said it, but I already forgot. So... (laughs) So in 2020, at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, Army Hammer and his family, his wife and his kids, went to the Cayman Islands to quarantine. Apparently, he got, like, cabin fever, he got, like, antsy, and he hopped on a flight to the USA, leaving his whole family behind in the Cayman Islands. And when he landed, his wife got a text message from him that was clearly intended for another woman. Uh Uh-oh. That's not even where it starts. But this was the reason that she divorced him. After the divorce, he started this string of flings with multiple women, like, over Instagram and text messages, and in those text messages, it was revealed that he had some serious, violent, and cannibalistic sexual fantasies. Oh. Yeah, so it's kind of crazy that it's not more well-known of a case, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, Because cannibalism? Hello? (laughs) In 2022, you know, it'd be different if this is, like, medieval times, and I don't know what the fuck kind of bondage you're experimenting with back then, you know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So, fetishes aside, that's not even the only fucked up thing about this story. It's just kind of, like, at the height of what's happening right now in 2022. Right. But this goes back to, like, 1912 with his great-great-grandfather. So, let's, let's start from the beginning of the story. So it all goes back to Army's great-great-grandfather, Dr. Julius Hammer, when he performed an illegal abortion on the wife of a Russian diplomat who ended up dying three days later. So he was convicted of first-degree manslaughter, and he ended up in prison for something like three, somewhere between three and twelve years. Now, he had a son named Armin Hammer, who was an oil tycoon. He would end up having to take over his father's business while he was doing time, And apparently, Vladimir Lenin sent a message to Joseph Stalin encouraging him to support Army Hammer's company. So that's already just kind of fishy, you know? Right, exactly. And he is performing an abortion on a Russian wife. His father. That's another thing. His father. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but it's his father's business, too. Yeah. So then Armin Hammer, the one who is now running his father's business... He got married multiple times. One of his wife's names was Francis, and he invested her money in a company called Occidental Petroleum. Now, in 1996, there were also some revelations about this business, such as that Armin had been laundering money, he had been bribing his way into the oil business, he was knocking off Fabergé eggs, and he was using artwork to fund Soviet espionage. He also made an illegal contribution to the Nixon re-election campaign, and he ended up facing, uh, and he ended up facing felony charges for obstructing justice. But his lawyer helped him plead guilty to misdemeanor charges, and H. W. Bush later pardoned him. Aside from the multiple wives that he had, Armand also had a few mistresses. One was named Martha Kaufman. She was a mother of two, and she divorced her husband after she met Armand. And he put her on his payroll, kind of like how how sugar daddies do. And his wife started getting suspicious. So when his wife got suspicious, Armin made Martha legally change her name and change her appearance by wearing wigs and glasses and changing her makeup. She says that Martha says that she had to submit to his sexual demands even when they were extremely humiliating. So these two were actually together for over a decade and Armin promised to provide for her and her children after he died. But sadly, when he did die... She found out that he had completely left her out of the will. Oh my god, that is like... Not just leaving her husband, but changing her name, changing her whole appearance, like creating this whole, like, other persona to be with him. You know, and all for all these false promises. It's like such a devil's advocate. It's like, well, you were married. You were, like, with somebody else's husband. But also... I guess, um, but yeah, a lot of times that's, you know, they convince you into that that kind of thing. Yeah, just like the um, Monica Lewinsky. Yup. 
Good point. So, well, it's the thing. Um, I, I imagine they don't just leave their husband with their kids to go like on a fling. I imagine they think they're going to start a new life with this guy. This was a rich guy, you know. Right. And I'm sure that was the biggest part of it was the security. So Armin was a pretty distant guy. Even his kids and his grandkids had to schedule appointments to see him. <laughs> so he seems like a real loving, loving, warm grandpa. Yeah, right? I feel like that lately. I'm like, well, I need to schedule you in to, to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> to do anything. <laughs> She's like, I'm five, mom. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I just learned to read. So um, interesting side note, Armin had a son named Julian that was born in 1929. He was born in Moscow, Russia. Um, okay, so yeah, here's Julian. So Armin had one son named Julian, but he completely passed him over when he decided to leave his business empire to his grandson, Julian's son, Michael. And Julian actually had his own crime. He killed a man in 1955 over a gambling debt and supposedly because the guy had made advances on Julian's wife. Allegedly, Armin had a friend deliver $50,000 to a lawyer in Los Angeles, and Julian claimed self-defense, and the charges were dismissed. That's so interesting. And wouldn't it be, like, more um, reasonable to bribe the judge rather than the lawyer? I don't know. Beats me! It, but it just it just seems these guys have connections, you know? It's scary. It's like yeah, an empire. Sure. Yeah, and is it, like, are they, like, are they just, do they have money and it works, or are they, like... Russian mafia there, like mob ties or something right yeah. like there's something scary here but anyway it, just the fact that they're so powerful and that any crime they commit just disappears that's the scarier part yeah yeah so yeah Julian had a daughter named Casey and she wrote a book called surviving my birthright and in it she alleges that her father Julian sexually abused her when she was a child and she also claims that Julian was abusive to other family members as well oh that's awful it's kind of like a, a an unsettling pattern of, like, the way they kind of see women as disposable, right? Is it just me? And am yeah. I imagining it? Or, like, right? No, because wasn't it the grandfather that had, he had multiple mistresses mm -hmm. and, and wives. he made her do humiliating sexual acts. Yep. And then Julian is also, like, this kind of sexual deviant right obviously. all the sons are like this finally a daughter's born and she's like i'm fucking speaking out so julian had another child named michael and michael was the father of army hammer and he was the one who like when arm and hammer passed over his son michael was the one that got the family business i wonder what made him do that so basically it's armand is the grandpa the dad is julian Oh, fuck. Okay, hold, hold on, on, hold on, hold on. Let's go back. So the, the very first one is Julius, the guy who did the illegal abortion. Then his son is Armand. Armand's son is Julian. And Julian's uh -huh. son is Michael. And Michael's okay. son is Okay, and then Michael's Armand. son. Okay. I, yes. Write that down, you guys. <laughs> Draw a tree and <laughs> we'll fill in the blanks. Every single one of them is fucked up, though, you know? Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Yeah, it, that's a lot. That's a lot of, like, um, trauma. And so far, every one of them has done something kind of kind of um, unsettling so far, right? <laughs> yeah. So, Michael Hammer, he met a woman named Drew Ann Mobley, and they fell in love. And they had a baby who they named Armin Hammer, and they call him Armish for short. So they named him after his grandfather. And also, going back to that name really quick, a lot of people believe that... Um, Arm and Hammer was the owner of the company Arm and Hammer. That's actually not true. So just to <laughs> fact check that real quick, Arm and Hammer actually, like, the company existed already. So Armand was like, I'm going to buy that company because I like the name. And I can't remember why, but it didn't, it like didn't go through. Like the sale didn't go through or whatever. So at the end of the day, he just invested in the company. So that's one of those rumors that like, it's, it's like easy to remember him that way, but it's not, it's not really a connection. That is so interesting because I for sure thought that that was his company. Why wouldn't you? Right. What are the chances? What are the chances that somebody named their son that after the company already existed, you know? That's funny. I haven't heard much about Army Hammer's mom, Drew Ann Mobley. The only thing that I did hear was that she was deeply religious. I believe she was Catholic and Michael was not into that. He kind of, kind of wouldn't allow her to um, teach that to her kids. 
And yet, like, later in life, I've heard of her saying, of people claim that she, like, spoke in tongues and would, like, pour oil over her son's head because she thought he had demons or, like, stuff like that. So, I mean, but as far as, like, the way her husband treated her, I couldn't find anything of her, like, speaking out against the family and their these dark secrets that were coming out now, you know? Right. Yeah. But Michael, on the other hand, allegedly kept a sex throne that... <laughs> He also called it the naughty chair. And let me <laughs> let me try to describe this to you because I couldn't find a picture. But basically the way it's described is it's like a chair that has a hole in the seat. And then it, it's like a seven foot tall structure because it's like there's a cage underneath it. So there's a cage with a chair on top of it in the hole in the in the chair. And this cage, I mean, it seems like it would be a big cage because there's this picture that I could not for the life of me find. But it's a picture of Michael sitting on the chair, and I guess he's holding, like, his hands are in the cage, and there's a blonde woman in it, and he's holding her head, and they're both, like, smiling, like, posing for the picture. Interesting. I know. I, you know what's funny? I was telling Joe about this, and I was like, I can't even picture it. He was like, I think I could picture it, and he kind of, like, explained it to me, and he was telling me, like, yeah, so he sits in the chair, and basically her head can come up just enough to, like, give oral sex or something. So I was like, or oh. Or he can shit on her. I don't know. Like- what? That's what I was – okay, thank you. <laughs> It's, I don't yeah, know. that's that's what I imagine. Or I mean, I don't know. I mean, we could go on and on about different things. You can maybe do it's a good chair. thing we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When Army was four years old, his grandfather Armin died. Now Armin was worth an estimated one hundred and eighty million dollars. So the battle for his estate began immediately. Within hours of Armin's death, Michael was spotted removing things from his home and loading them into five cars he had waiting. Oh, okay. Many family members claimed that Armin had promised to take care of them after his death, but he ended up not leaving anybody much at all. There were a hundred lawsuits filed against his estate, by Casey, by former mistresses, and even by charities that alleged that Armin Hammer owed them money. Oh, wow. Like, he was promising money left and right, and That's at the end of the day, he had, it. like, no intention of putting anybody in the, in the will. So he did put, like, a small amount of people in his will, and the amount of money he gave them was, like, pitiful. So now, getting back to the main subject. Army Hammer, again born in 1986, his professional acting career began with a small guest appearance on television series like Arrested Development, Veronica Mars, Gossip Girl, Reaper, and Desperate Housewives. He had a minor role in the 2006 film Flicka, and he co-starred in the 2008 psychological thriller Blackout. He played the title role in a movie called Billy the Early Years, and in 2010 he had his breakthrough role in The Social Network. Army Hammer got married in 2010 to a television personality named Elizabeth Chambers, and they later had two kids together. Army has always been very, very vocal about his sexual interests, making comments about liking things like pulling hair and making social media comments, um, showing an interest in bondage. Like, he was, like, not just with his friends, like, on social media, he would, like, post things like this so everybody could see it. Right. He introduced his wife to, I believe it's, uh, you call it shibari, which is a, a Japanese bondage art form where people are tied up in intricate patterns. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, I've seen that. They do like Christmas trees and like a whole bunch of different, yeah. I've seen artwork based on this, which it, it seems like a really artistic form of bondage, you know? Yeah. Anyway, she wasn't all that into it. <laughs> it's a little scary. I mean, it's, you know, everybody's different. Yeah, exactly. Apparently she tried to like... <laughs> She tried to get him to, like, why don't you write a book about somebody who likes tying knots? <laughs> like, try to, like, <laughs> she tried to be, like, supportive, <laughs> but, like, but not with me. <laughs> In 2011, Army Hammer was arrested for possession of marijuana. He wasn't prosecuted at the end of the day. He spent the night in jail and later recalled, the inmates were great. The guards were real assholes. It seems like Army doesn't have as long as a, of a rap sheet as his forefathers did, but it does kind of speak to how much power, again, the Hammer fam- the Hammer name carries and how they can just get away with anything time and time again. Whether they're fucking funding Soviet espionage or fucking get caught with marijuana, you know what I mean? Yeah, or murder. Or murder, right. Shortly after the birth of his son in 2017, Army slept with another woman. And years after that, Elizabeth found evidence that he was having an affair with a co-star. So they started going to expensive therapy for their relationship. And then in 2020, during the COVID-19 pandemic, Army got cabin fever from quarantining with his family in the Cayman Islands. And he left them to take a little trip to the United States on his own. And that's when he sent his wife a raunchy text message that wasn't intended for her. So 
this was the last straw for Elizabeth and she filed for a divorce. Yeah, that's really hard because it sounds like he was like, it was an accident, like, you know, or I didn't mean it. And then they're going to therapy and it seems fine. And then all of a sudden. He was exactly. Like, it sounds like she was trying to be forgiving and give him the benefit of the doubt, you know, and like work on it. Right. Um, and later, even when she finds out about all this, like some people even suspected that, you know, she must have known. And she and she actually said, like, turns out there's a lot I didn't know. Wow. Elizabeth divorced him, and for Army, it was like coming up for fresh air. Fresh air. It was like coming Rest up air. for a <laughs> breath of fresh air. I can tell you're stoned. <laughs> <laughs> he suddenly felt the freedom that he had been longing for for a long time, and he had a string of flings. He got multiple tattoos in a matter of, like, five months. He was living like a bachelor. In fact, there is... I believe it's a, a tweet. No, I think it's on Instagram. Let me see if I find it. It says, divorce is so fun. Not as fun as drugs, though. But what is? Oh. So that's, that's how he's feeling right now. Apparently, his father, Michael, had very similar behavior in between his marriages. He would just, like, sleep around with multiple women and go out partying all the time. On January 11, 2021, Army Hammer started trending on social media. Some of the women who he had been talking to said that he was totally captivating and they were intoxicated by his charm. He would be really, really romantic and intimate and then things would move on to passionate and eventually to kinky. And then the way they describe it, it's like he did this with disorienting ease. Like he would charm them and seduce them and suddenly they were active participants in some something that they like hadn't had thought about doing, you know what I mean? Like, it, all of a sudden, it was, like, scary, and they were in the middle of it. One of the women he started talking to in June was named Courtney Vuskovich. She said that from the very first interaction, he dropped a lot of bombs about his family drama. So they bonded over their drama, and Courtney had this to say. Day one, he makes you feel bad for him. It's when he makes himself look like a victim. Then he love bombs you like crazy. You've never felt more special in your entire life. I've never seen anything like it. We're in a restaurant and I'm sitting across from him and he pulls my chair over right next to him in front of everybody and he's hugging and kissing you. You're the only girl in the whole world. And then he starts the manipulation and the darker stuff. Hmm. She recalled an evening she had with him that she ended up regretting. Army was drinking heavily and he persuaded her to, par he persuaded her to participate in a bondage scenario that Courtney wasn't comfortable with. He sulked, he became cold and angry and he convinced her. Eventually she gave in. As chaotic as it was, she says that it felt like a real relationship to her. They spent every day together, and he introduced her to his mother. He's, like, doing all these things to show her she's special. Right. He's like, oh, you know, I love you so much. Just do this for me. By September of that year, she checked herself into a treatment program for trauma. Oh, wow. So there was definitely, like, a lot of shit going on. From one man, dude. That's crazy. That same month, Army was already texting another woman, a 22-year-old named Paige Lorenz. That was quick. For sure. Paige opened up about her relationship with him, which lasted four months, and she also calls deeply traumatic, saying that it left her emotionally and physically scarred. On their first night of intimacy, he told her, you can either call me daddy or sir. She also immediately received a barrage of really dark details about his family. She says... He said his grandfather was this really scary person who had these crazy sex parties where there would be guns. He thought it was cool and was proud of him in a way. That, like, that freaks me out. That gives me Joffrey from Game of Thrones vibes. Joffrey? Who's Joffrey? He's the little blonde kid who, like, fucking... Yeah, he was... Okay, so the, the brother and sister who were incestuous, he was their son. Oh, okay. And he, like, became king for a little bit, and it was, like, terrifying because he's this evil little son of a bitch. Mm-hmm. Little fucker. So, like, now we, we're seeing a sexual pattern with the har the Hammer Men. Right. And, like, did the grandpa make him participate in these parties? Or was he just a kid and saw it I and couldn't was, find, like, I couldn't find traumatizing. An anything else speaking to that. Just that Paige said, he said his grandfather had these crazy sex parties where there would be guns. And he thought it was cool and he was proud of him in a way. Like, there's no elaboration on that as far as I could find. Which his grandfather was Julian. Oh, I thought his grandfather was Armin. You're right. His grandfather was Julian. And Julian was supposedly the one who also molested his daughter. 
Yes. But it's like you have so, to imagine. Well, for I was gonna say you have to imagine these guys have seen things as kids, you know. But obviously, if the kid's grand, the guy's grandson is telling the story, that's not appropriate. Right. So Army also introduced Paige to his mother. She says that Army didn't have any money and he always got by on loans from his friends, and that she often paid for stuff for him. She ended up breaking up with him eventually because he started making rules that he truly expected her to follow. Like, he tried to control what she could do and who she could talk to, and she started to feel unsafe. And not only that, but she knew that she was becoming emotionally dependent on him, and I think that was his goal. So, all these things I'm going to tell you about Paige, she did a a few interviews. Like, she did an interview with Daily Mail, and she also did one on Dr. Oz, so... In one of these interviews, she shared a photo of a scar that he left on her during a sex game. Uh, it's in the shape of an A, and it's just, it's, like, close to her, like, private area, her, her, her genitals, sorry. I'm like, like her pu- pubic Yeah, exactly. Area. It's, it's, like, exactly. Um, her no-no area. This, I'm just sorry, this article says it's millimeters away from her private parts, but I saw the picture, and it doesn't look millimeters away. It it looks like it's it's in the area where you shave, for sure. So it was definitely close to it, you know, but not millimeters, I think. I mean, anything could be millimeters if you measure in millimeters. Like 2,000 millimeters. <laughs> <laughs> it was on her forehead. <laughs> <laughs> so here's what she had to say about it. He tried to rationalize it as his gesture of his commitment to us being together for the long term. I wasn't sure he was serious as he looked over my body and said, where should I carve an A on you? And by the way, she was tied up during this. And she says, before I could process it, he plunged the tip of the knife into my flesh just above my vagina. Oh my god. Maybe I was looking at the picture from the wrong angle. (laughs) (laughs) it it could be on her pubic mound. She continued, the pain was excruciating, but I did not want to seem weak despite the discomfort. I froze as he smiled at his work. He then said the cut was not deep enough, even though it was about an inch, the whole tip (gasps) of the blade. Oh my god. Okay, wait a minute. Why, you just want to process it or are you going to say something? (laughs) Yeah, I'm processing it because I'm hearing this and she said that it was... About an inch, the whole tip of the blade. But that, my dear, compared to your hand, is not near an inch. So You I'm know confused. what? I don't know who wrote this article, but I don't think they know their measurements. No, they don't. <laughs> Maybe they meant the um, thing, the scar was inches away and it was millimeters tall. But even still, like, look knuckle to knuckle. The whole tip of the blade still sounds like a lot, yeah. Anyway, so, uh, listeners, as we're saying this, we acknowledge that it, the science doesn't add up. But Anyway, there is a picture of the scar, though. We'll show it to you. I don't know how fucking deep it is. <laughs> Who cares how deep it is? He fucking scarred her, and it's scary. I'm no doctor. <laughs> I'm not a mathematician, either. Yeah. So she continues, he said he wanted to collect a kitchen knife to make it bigger, but then as it bled, he started licking it. Uh-huh. Uh. Okay. This continued for a few minutes, and I kind of blanked it all out. I had to clean it and put a Band-Aid on afterwards. Yeah. Well, he put his tongue on it. He knew I was upset, but he did not say sorry. The next day, he even told people what he had done. I was upset, embarrassed, and humiliated, but he insisted. You should be proud of it. I would not tell anyone who did not think it was awesome. She says, I rationalized it with his logic of us being a couple to mask the truth, but I was completely manipulated. It's humiliating as it will haunt me forever. I will have laser treatment to get rid of the scar. Oh, my God. Somebody out there is going to come at me saying that she admitted that she consented to this, but she also speaks out a lot about how consent is complicated. You know, she was kind of pressured. He used his fame and his age. He he knew more than her, and he probably reminded her of that. These things, I don't mm-hmm. want to feel weak. Like, don't don't blame her for that. Like, we live in this world where, like, Men are okay with that, you know? They know they know that they're vulnerable, and they're taking advantage of it, and that's the problem. This fucking superstardom, like... I, yeah, they know that they're scary. Like, people who will fucking back up R. Kelly. R. Kelly is the famous one who is going after people who... They're his biggest fan, you know? Right. He's yeah. legitimately looking for his youngest, biggest fans, the ones 
who are like when you're teenagers you're completely irrational when you like have a fucking crush you're you, you think right. you're obsessed with them you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so yep they definitely use it to manipulate people who are more vulnerable and like she was only 22 and that's what i'm saying she was 22 she was definitely not a child but he was 34 and famous and rich well no apparently not rich rich enough it's it's a power move that at the end of the day i was just gonna say it's a power dynamic to where she knows that if she said no there's gonna be all kinds of mind games they they break you down slowly and um, yeah and that's the thing you'll probably he'll probably make you feel stupid or incompetent or like you know what other people would do it you know other people wouldn't be this difficult right there are other or make her feel there. guilty like mm-hmm. oh or probably tell her well you're 22 when you get older maybe yeah you know i can only imagine page also claimed that hammer talked about wanting to strangle his dog which was a little welsh terrier named archie she said he would get angry at his dog and say things like I'm going to kill this dog. I would have strangled him if he weren't here. Oh, okay. She did note that she doesn't think he ever hurt the animal. But just talking like that, that was weird. Like, I've said things like, I'm going to strangle you if you don't stop. But to say, like, I would strangle him if you weren't here is weird. It makes me wonder if it's not it's not just a threat towards the dog, but to, to her that, like, I could do this at any moment. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm capable of murder. Paige also says, I'm not trying to kink shame at all, but I think that dangerous men sometimes use this as like a smoke screen for abusing and hurting women for their own sexual pleasure. I am holding him accountable, and I think he knows that he's caused a lot of women pain, even if he doesn't want to admit it right now. And there is power in numbers. Army had also begged her to have her ribs removed so that she could barbecue them. She said, he wanted to find a doctor in LA so that he could remove one of my ribs as, quote, you do not need it. And then he wanted to barbecue it and eat it while she watched. What? <laughs> Is this funny? <laughs> He's like, it was um, mine to begin with. So She's like, you don't need this. He's like, come on. Just, let me just go. <laughs> you don't need it. I'm really hungry. <laughs> I'm really hungry. <laughs> Um, that's scary. Also, to me, like, if somebody's saying all these, all of these things, I almost lisp, like, super hard. Um, in the back of my mind, it's like, if I don't do what they say, they're gonna fucking murder me and eat me. So, yeah, that's, like, a scary thing to be. Yeah, you're trying to, like, play it cool and be like, no, no, I'm not, I'm not putting up a fight, you know? Yeah, no, because if you kill me, they're not finding my body because you ate it. Yeah, and, and so not just that. Paige, apparently, the first night they were together, he told her that he was a sadomasochist. And she actually said she didn't know what that was. She thought that that meant he was, like, in a cult, like Scientology or something. So, like, she had no idea what this was. And he kind of, I mean, for, I don't know, maybe the best word is he groomed her into this, you know? He kind of, like, trained her and taught her about it, you know? Yeah, because she's, like, a a little deer. Yeah, Fresh. a little deer. <laughs> a little deer. A newborn. Yeah, and he just was like, I'm big words. And she's like, oh, okay. <laughs> and, I, and I imagine that this makes it all the easier to tell her, like, you'll, you know, you'll get it. You know what I mean? You'll figure it out. Just like, you just try it. You know, you'll see. You know what I mean? It right. just makes it all the easier to, like, tell her, like, don't worry. Everybody does this, you know? Right. This is totally normal. Uh, anyway, that thing about him eating her ribs, she says that he said that more than once, and he was absolutely serious. So, quick poll. Raise your hand if you've ever told a guy no, or I don't like it, or something along those lines. And his response is to keep trying, or keep asking, or keep talking about it, or maybe even make comments about how other women would do it, or how it's not really a big deal, or maybe even tell you that you're being difficult, or you don't care about his pleasure or his feelings. And how often is it clear that he knows you don't want it and he doesn't give a fuck? You know what I mean? I feel like that's probably relatable to more more people than just me. Right. I agree. I definitely agree with that. And they play fucking dumb or they play like or they'll say something like I didn't think you meant it. Yeah. Or you'll you can say no and then they can like you say no so many times and then finally you're just like fine, but you still are not into it. Like that's still not okay. That's the thing. If you have to keep asking, if you have to convince the person, like, that's not consent. Yep. So Paige actually said, 
He told me there's a whole community that will do this stuff, that it was not criminal. He really thought that his fantasies were normal behavior in the BDSM, non-normative sexual kink community. I thought that this was what it was. I thought I was safe. But any man who is fantasizing about crushing bones, eating them, having sex with female limp bodies is a danger to all women. And this is not me kink shaming. I want that to be clear. BDSM is a smokescreen for him wanting to hurt women. It's unacceptable that he coerces women into agreeing to let him hurt them. Sorry, again, that was Paige talking, not me, I feel like. <laughs> I agreed with her, so I got I got in there with her. Right, yeah. Fortunately, she was smart enough to end the relationship over text. Quote, because you never know what you're going to get with him. He's kind of a scary person. And girl, good for you. I mean, at 22, yes. being that smart is going to keep her safe in the long run. And I really hope that that's not because she's had to learn the hard way. But like, good for you. I, I am absolutely one of those women that I'm not going to, I'm not going to find out if tomorrow. I'm going right, to nope exactly. the fuck out of there. Yep. So Paige just wanted to be done with Army. She didn't even want to mutter his name anymore. And then she saw these messages posted on um, an anonymous Instagram account. And they were screenshots of text messages that were like uncanny. They looked just like the um, the intense text messages that Army would send her. So this Instagram account was named House of Effie. And apparently this was one of the girls that Army had like one of his little girlfriends. The date stamps on these screenshots range from 2016 to 2020, so they did overlap with his marriage to Elizabeth. Oh. House of Effie also claims that at least five women were engaged in consensual affairs with Army Hammer while he was married to Elizabeth Chambers, and that each woman was led to believe that they were the only one. The account posted, We all got told we're perfect, that he wants to run away with us, that it's our world and fuck everyone else. He loved us all in his and his ex's bed and made us a cute omelet in the morning. <gasps> so we all had apartments ready for him around the world. He met all of our moms and they all loved him. He told us all to be monogamous to him and wait for his divorce. Wow. So Paige saw these screenshots and her stomach dropped. She was like, holy fuck, because he would say the same weird stuff to her. What? Okay, hold on. I'm reading this. It says the hammer men and I'm on like a Reddit thread and somebody said the hammer men and their sexual inventions am i right between this whole throne and a's blowjob automatic head cutter they're on to a new empire and somebody was like blowjob head cutter what was that and then he said it was in a dm with effie about how they would die at the same time she would choke on his cock and he imagined a contraption that would simultaneously cut off his head to cover them with his warm blood while they died sorry for the naturalism what the actual fuck somebody said. So let me just read some of these text messages that, like I said, these are from multiple women. I am 100% accountable. Fuck. That's scary to admit. I've never admitted that before. I've cut the heart out of a living animal before and eaten it while still warm. <clears throat> I want to see your brain, your blood, your organs, every part of you. I would definitely bite it. Try to fuck it. Not sure which. Probably both. <sighs> oh my god. God, I, that is, um, murder. Yeah, hold on, I'm not done. Um, <laughs> I, I know. God. There's quite a bit. If I fucked you into a vegetative state, I'd keep you, feed you, watch you, and keep fucking you. Till you are so sore and broken, I can't stop thinking of fucking your actual brain. Oh my god, that, like, actually makes me nauseous. I know. Brand you, tattoo you, mark you, shave your head and keep your hair with me, cut a piece of your skin off and make you cook it for me. Whose slave-master relationship is the strongest? We'd win. When I tell you to slit your wrist and use the blood for anal. Like, who comes up with this? This sounds like straight-up Jeffrey Dahmer shit, doesn't it? That is... This is far okay. beyond like, bondage. They need to take him and... Uh, Lock him up. Test him. <laughs> yes, I don't want to be rude. So Paige spoke up for several reasons. When she saw these text messages come out, it like hit her that there were going to be other victims who were traumatized like she was. Uh, she also wanted to open up conversations about consent, saying consent is really complicated, even if it's consenting to something in a vanilla sex that you don't really want to do and say yes to. It can be really traumatizing. She hopes to start an organization that can advocate for safe, for safe sex and women learning how to say no. 
I agree with that. But also, how about we um, have a campaign for men learning how to accept no? <laughs> yeah. No, but you know what? I think it's partly because people blame her. It's not just about that it happened, but that people are blaming her for it happening, you know, because she agreed. She probably carries a lot of guilt for having agreed. Like, that that breaks my heart, you know? Yeah. It's it's yeah. probably not even how people hold her accountable. Her holding herself accountable is probably like, why did I do that, you know? Yeah, maybe. So, Army's lawyer issued a statement in response to all these accusations saying, All interactions between Mr. Hammer and his former partners were were consensual. They were fully discussed, agreed upon in advance with his partners, and mutually participatory. The stories perpetuated on social media were designed to be salacious in an effort to harm Mr. Hammer, but that does not make them true. So this raised a lot of questions in the BDSM community. I can't remember whose representative this was, but I believe it was one of the females, like a uh, House of Effie, or one of, one of the girls. Oh, okay. So their representative said, Part of the problem is that the victim is extremely vulnerable and trusting and is often taken advantage of by sexual predators who know that many of their victims will be afraid to report the crimes against them for being for fear of being blamed and shamed and not believed when they say they did not consent to crimes against them. It's it's difficult, you know, it's deep. There's so many levels to it. Right. And people who go through trauma like that, they don't want to be on a stand with the person's lawyer being like well, you said yes. Mm -hmm. You wanted it, didn't you? I can't imagine. Yeah, I feel like really like hard. just you saying that makes me like choke up, you know? Like I can't imagine being on trial mm -hmm. like that and like being accused. Like why did I do this and that? And just like every everything I did under a microscope. Like anyway. Um, so yeah, with <laughs> us having said a hundred times that we don't want a king shame, I did want to look into like the psychology behind the cannibalism thing because – so I came across this article where a, a dominatrix was um, interviewed and she, I guess, had fetishes as well that were based, I'm sorry, she says that they're rooted in cannibalism. And the way she describes it really makes it sound like it's not about harming another person. It's more like um, a role playing thing. But like, okay, so let me, let me uh, read some of these quotes to you. But don't come at me telling me I'm condoning this synth, this sick fuck. Just right. like somebody came at me telling me that I was an angry lesbian for the way I talked about Chris Chan. I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to make it. I huh? didn't get those vibes. I did not get those vibes at all. So this, this dominatrix, she explains that there's not one typical way to enact like a cannibalism scene. The drinking the blood or it might be the biting or even like eating things off of each other. Um, she says that there is this one fantasy people have that like people fantasize that they're teeny tiny and that a giant comes and consumes them. So, and she, you know. I don't know, know why that's kind of funny. Not funny as in like I'm making fun of them, but I'm also really happy. I know, it's because it sounds to us, it sounds like cartoony, you know, but it's like, hey, yeah, like exactly. just because we don't understand it doesn't mean it's not valid as long as he's not like hurting that fucking no dog or something like that, you know. <laughs> This lady will call her Wu. She has engaged in cat cannibalism fetish from both ends as a consumer and a consumee. She says, as a dom or the consumer, the power or pleasure is derived from the knowledge that they're willing to give part of themselves for my pleasure or nourishment. On the other side of the equation, she says, for me, there are a lot of different instances where it represents closeness. When you really think about it, the desire about the craving to assimilate another when you are so fucking into that person, you need to have them or be owned by them or be entangled in a specific way. Cannibalism as a fetish really highlights or fulfills the sense of wanting to be close to someone and the futility that it'll never fully happen. In regards to the text that Army Hammer sent, Wu said that she was relatively unperturbed by the text at first, saying that they seem pretty typical male dommy, if not a slight bit extreme. But then when she delved further into them, she started to see some red flags, saying that she found a message where the recipient told her that having a belt around her neck during sex is too much, and Hammer responded with, yes. Okay. In another text, the woman was talking about a, sexual, uh, a prior sexual encounter, and she said, I truly did want to stop for most of the time, which is pretty explicitly a consent violation, you know? And not only that, but there are the accusations that he kind of captivates you while being charming and he's grooming you for these things that get darker and heavier and more and more consuming. Uh, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> and like multiple people have said that they did things that they were not comfortable with. 
So I just thought that was interesting. She she says, this man has a fetish, this man has a kink, but I don't think it was true BDSM because there was a clear consent violation that occurred. It's just like spicy assault. So like, there you go. Like, this is from a dominatrix who is pro these things. So it's like, maybe it could be valid if there if the core of it really is nobody's getting hurt. Nobody ever will get hurt, you know? That's not the intention. You know what I mean? Right. But did that girl say that he could take a knife to her and cut her without asking her first you know like there's there's clear already brought to it sounds like he surprised her because it his lawyer says like well it was all agreed upon and consented to at the beginning but the way she describes it it's like no she was tied up and all of a sudden he had a knife and asked her and before she could answer he did it that doesn't sound like agreed upon she was talking about how you end up doing things that are very out of character for you and including sex acts and then as somebody tweeted, if you are questioning still whether or not those army hammer dams are real, and they are, maybe you should start questioning why we live in a culture willing to give abusers the benefit of the doubt instead of in, ex, instead of victims. Boom. So his friends have defended him saying, like, he's just kinky, you know, and people are putting him on blast. The only statement that Army actually made came in January when he told the public why he was leaving a movie that he was doing with Jennifer Lopez that's called Shotgun Wedding. It's um, actually supposed to come out this summer. He said, I am not responding to these bullshit claims, but in light of the vicious and spurious online attacks against me, I cannot in good conscience now leave my children for four months to shoot a film in the Dominican Republic. Of course, he wouldn't do something like that again. Yeah, no. On January 16th, fans tracked down ARMY's fake Instagram. These screenshots were published by the by the Daily Mail, and uh, they showed ARMY's court orders to complete random drug tests. And, um, hold on, what does he say? It's like a picture of him with a big, goofy smile, and he's like... Oh, uh, when you realize they don't test for DMT on drug tests? Yes, that's what he said. He also posted a picture with, like, this hot girl and like it was from her like on all fours and i think it was her from behind and he was like he said something about hanging out with miss cayman islands and i don't know if somebody came back at him with a response or something but he issued an apology and was like i don't know what i was thinking that wasn't really miss like the the miss cayman islands i didn't expect anybody to take it that way and he basically apologized for all this like weird content that he had been because he'd been just fucking posting like crazy about the drugs that he was doing and the women he was sleeping with you know so anyway, this apology basically proved that the Instagram account did, in fact, belong to him, you know? Oh, yeah. Those who knew ARMY professionally have had a hard time watching the ARMY they knew seemingly implode in a fit of social media posts, bad behavior, and substance abuse in the recent months. A person who was once close to the family has expressed genuine concern for Elizabeth as she moves forward in her custody ban- battle with the Hammers. She said, I just want to tell her to be careful. I hope she can just get off that island soon. Apparently, she had gotten a text message from some random person, like, close to the family that said, Don't go out after dark. If you do, go in a group. Park under a light and near a store entrance. Valet as much as you can. Be aware and beware. Always check to make sure you're not being followed. Watch your surroundings for a stranger's face that appears more than once. Oh my god, why are they saying that? Do they think he's gonna kill her? I wonder if that's him. Is he going to kill her? So that's his wife, the mother of his children. Yeah. I was going to say, I wonder if those drug tests are court ordered to, like, for the custody part. Maybe, Maybe. they're like, I want to make sure you're not on drugs before I agree to Especially anything. Especially with all his fucking social media posts and his, he had, he had concerning behavior, like, to the point where, okay. So he went back to, to the Cayman Islands, but, you know, not living with his wife. He's on his own now. <laughs> On February 12th, he was seen exhibiting strange behavior at the resort where he was staying. Someone who was supposedly staying at the resort claims that they witnessed him, they, what they, they called it horrifying behavior. But then as it, is, as it describes it, it says, it's quite horrifying to be honest. He walks up and down West Bay Road with no shirt or shoes, without a care in the world, always boisterous and obnoxious and full of himself. No one quite understands, especially as Elizabeth raises her kids alone and kills herself to do everything for those children. No one wants him here or understands why he's not in a facility of some sort. So it's like maybe maybe as fans and around the world, like we're just like, oh, he's having drama with his wife. But people who are seeing him in person in the Cayman Islands are like, 
look at this fucking scumbag just like strutting around. Right. And, but I don't know what they mean by his horrifying behavior. I mean, it sounds like he's just barefoot and snobby. But <laughs> maybe he treated, maybe he treated people like shit too. Maybe that's what he means by being obnoxious and boisterous. Yeah, maybe. There are also concerns for the safety of Casey, who was Army's aunt and sister of Michael Hammer, who was uh, Army's father, the one who unloaded his father's house the minute that he died. Right. So Casey has been really open about her family's dark secrets. She was one of the people that got next to nothing from Armin's inheritance, so I believe it was like a puny sum that lasted her like 18 years. And she said, If you would have told me in my 20s that I would end up financially challenged, single, and working at Home Depot, I would have bet you a million dollars that wouldn't have happened. She says that after those 18 years of money ran out, she's basically been living on her own, eating Progresso soup and bologna sam- sandwiches. If her brother Michael had given her even one of the family paintings, she says that she would have been set for life. She said, I was never taught to save money or think ahead. I was never taught it would end. But it's okay, though, because I broke the cycle, if that makes sense. And I got away from the hammer genetic trait. Wow. And doesn't Michael just sound like an absolute scumbag? Yeah. Like, completely greedy, too. Um. Yeah, so that's the story of Army Hammer. Again, he's just free man because like there's no crime so far and i mean you gotta wonder how many women aren't speaking Mm -hmm. or embarrassed or i don't know if he's actually hurt somebody or something you know right again not to just jump to conclusions but i mean only time will tell you know that's the thing this (laughs) this is kind of open-ended it is if you're out there like don't go out with army hammer guys yeah, don't do it. Don't do it. He's very attractive, but don't yeah, do he's, it. And he's charming, and he'll love bomb you, but don't do yeah. it. Yeah. And he has a really hard childhood, so... I know, his life is so hard. He's so sad. And he's so hungry. Well, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need them all, you selfish bitch. <laughs> Give me one of your ribs. Ah, all right, so that's too Army soon, Hammer. Too soon. Sorry, it's not funny. It's very serious. It is. Yeah, it is. But. It's just unreal. You know, it's unfathomable. We're even talking to a dominatrix who, like, professionally does this, and she's like, yeah, no, this guy's not okay. Right. Be afraid. Beware yeah. and be aware. If you guys meet Army Hammer, run, sis. Get the fuck out. Ye- <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's it for today. As always, you can go to brokenlimelight.com. We'll have an almost complete transcript, which it's really just like a big mess of notes. Um, but there's also some screenshots. Uh, some, a lot of those screenshots that we talked about, I'm going to be posting them up there. Um, also, maybe some pictures of like the, the Hammer family. And I'll see if I can find some interviews with Elizabeth and Casey. But I mean, really, you can see most of this, you can see from screenshots of the text messages. So if you're interested, again, go to brokenlimelight.com. Um, what else do I have to say, Summer? I have an idea. Um, we are going to be doing a bonus episode soon, so keep an eye out for that. Do you know what that one's about? I do. I just didn't know you were going to say something, so I'm excited. And Summer's going to tell the story. <laughs> I, I didn't. Am. I didn't know you were ready. So, but yeah, let's do it. One of these days. Yeah. One of these days. Yeah. I just wanted to let you know to keep an eye out for that. So. Yeah. Don't worry. We're not. We're never going to run out of Summer. She's always coming back. And I think that's it. So thank you guys for listening. Thank you. Bye. Bye. And the thing is, is with cannibalism, cannibalism. Um, (laughs) (laughs) So where are they originally from, this family? Uh, Hammer. Germany? (laughs) I, I was going to say, like, Armenian or something, because it's Armin. Army. <laughs> um, there was a company that I worked for in Tennessee, and it was owned by a man who had a woman on his payroll that only came in to go. He Like, his house was attached to the business, so she would walk in the front door of the business and then go to his house, and then she would leave a couple hours later, and I'm like, oh, okay. All right. But she was on his payroll, but you never saw her work. <laughs> yeah, pretty clear what was happening there. The more you know. The more you know. Rainbow. Rainbow hands. He played... Oh Oh my god, I thought you fell. (laughs) No. Sorry. (laughs) How the fuck did he get off with self-defense, you know? In a a bar. I just...
Wait, was it in a bar? I don't know if I'm just, like, making that up. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> You're like, in a fucking speakeasy. <laughs> it probably was. I feel like... In fucking <laughs> Moscow! <laughs> <laughs> So, for him to prove his commitment to them being together, he carved an A on her to prove his commitment. Am I am I getting that right? I will read it again. House of Effie claims that at least five women were engaged in consensual affairs with, um, what's his name? <laughs> Army Hammer? I was about to say Chris Chan. <laughs> <laughs> Let me say that again. He wishes. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you, if anybody got angry lesbian vibes from the Chris Chan episode, maybe it's because Chris Chan was basically an angry lesbian. Like I acknowledge <laughs> that he's not really a woman, but he was absolutely like a man hater. You know what I mean? He hated men. He hated gay men. He hated women with boyfriends. Clearly, he hated anybody who liked men. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it does, it's not shocking to me that he identified as a lesbian. But anyway, I'm sorry. I'm off topic. I'm going to make a t-shirt that says angry lesbian, though. What's your problem? It's 2022, bruh. On January 16th, Army Hammer's fans tracked down his finsta. What does that mean? Finsta? Is it finsta? Or did you just put an F in that's front what of it? No, I. that's what it said. Okay. I'm I'll just making insta. sure. Ah. That's what it is. Oh. It's a faux insta. Look at us. <laughs> We're so hip. <laughs> Sorry, I was just thinking about that bitch that loves Woody Allen. <laughs> Tempe, if you're listening, go fuck yourself. 